Okay, while we are here, we have my so while we're here, I want to quickly do um, an alternate problem. Remember, on the test, we have to have different versions. So an alternate problem for number 10 would be this. Um, how much, I'm not gonna write out the whole thing in perfect grammar, but how much 83% um, solution should be mixed with 17% um, solution to get uh, 47 quarts of 32% solution. Okay, so it's the same basic problem, but it's going to look a little bit different when I get it right out, so when, it, or when I get it written out. So I have amount times percent plus amount times percent equals amount times percent. All right, so let's fill in all of our percentages. Okay, so we have 0 0.83, 0 0.17, now here's where the difference is. Yeah, because the 47 goes over here this time, right? Right. And this is still X, because it still says how much, so that's still what I'm looking for. But now, yes, exactly. So I didn't even need to do this, because you all know it already. But what I want to caution you about is these two add up to that one, right? So if you're working backwards, you're not going to be adding, you're going to be subtracting. These two have to add up to that one. So if your empty space is here, it's 47 plus x. But if it's here, it's 47 minus x. Use your common sense. You add these to get that. So backing up, that's going to be a subtraction. Lauren? Usually the way the question is asked is how much of this. So what, whatever you're wondering how much of, that's going to be x. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this since we have it up here. Um, and then we'll move on with the practice test. This is an extra problem, but I just wanted to do it to make sure everybody sees the difference. There's also a little bit of difference here. See these two X's right here? These guys are gonna get combined. I mean, they're on the same side of the equation. So I have to combine these two. So 0.83 minus 0.17, so 0.66X plus 7.99. <coughs> Alright, so you've done a couple of those. There's only one on the test, but it might, the question might look like that one or it might look like this one. Format's the same. Right? Alright, last year our pre cal book cost 123. Now it costs 134. Find the percent of increase. How do we find percent of change? Difference divided by original. So that's easy. What's the difference here? 11 divided by 123. The only caution I have about this is, everybody should know how to do that. 
type it in. The tabulator says 0 0.0894. Don't write that in the answer blank because the question specifically says find the percent. <laughs> so that will be 8.94% in class. And then now we have our page of graphing. We knew that was coming. I've been promising you, you're gonna have a page of graphing. I hope you do, that would be great. The whole page, so it'd be good to be well on it. It's exactly like this one, formatted exactly the same. Yeah, I crammed some of it together. This one is actually all spaced out exactly like it is on the chart. All right, so here we go. There's our original shape. I'm going to make a note here. This trapezoid is three tall and three wide. This one's two tall and two wide. And this one's three wide and one tall. You don't have to do that, but I think it helps some of us to do that. So now we've got F of the absolute value. F of the absolute value. So what does that do? Mamuna? Can't hear you, what? It's the mirror, it sure is, that's the mirror. So that means we mirror right, right? So I'm gonna draw the right side no changes, exactly the same. There it is, there's the right side of my picture. And then I redraw it on the other side. And that's it, that's it. Okay, that's super easy. Now look at B. B is an absolute value, but it's a different kind of absolute value. B is the absolute value of the whole thing, of the Y. It's the whole shebang there. So, what does that do? What's the bottom? That's the bottoms up one, yep. So everything on the bottom comes up. So, the trapezoid is already up. The triangle is already up. But the baby trapezoid has to come up. So the only change is whatever we have on the bottom is gonna come up to the top. What do you think, are you okay with that? I know the rules. All right, C. All right, what's happening here? Two things. Two things are happening. What's the negative here? That's an upside down. Yep, good. That's an upside down. What does this do? This is not a sideways flip. The only way we can flip is to have a, ne a, a negative, not a minus sign, but a negative. This is a subtraction. What do adds and subtracts do? Move you. Adds and subtracts pick you up and move you. How does this one move? Right, right one. So you are going to take the picture and move it to the right line and turn it upside down. Okay? If you can do that one step, great. I'm going to do it in two. I'm going to take my original picture and I'm going to move it to the right one. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have moved the picture to the right one. Everybody okay with that? Now I'm going to turn it upside down. So I'm going to take my little trapezoid like that, my triangle like that, and my big trapezoid like that. So the red thing, the red thing will be the answer to the question. We're going left and upside down. I mean right, I'm sorry, we're right and upside down. of negative one-third x. Okay? Oops, that's not good. All right, what does this negative do? Sideways. Sideways flip. That's a sideways flip. What does this one third do? Divide. Divide the width. The width. The width. The width. Okay. Okay. So that means that this trapezoid right here is going to flip over to this side, and its width is going to be three divided by a third. And three divided by a third is three times three. So that trapezoid is going to sit over here and be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide. He is still just three tall. Agreed? So here he is. I flip him to this side and made him three times as wide. Now, see this triangle right here? He's coming over here, and he's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six wide, and two tall. We're not changing the height. We're stretching it out. This little trapezoid upside down, he's gonna be nine wide, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And he is still one down. So two things happened in this problem. We flipped it sideways and we stretched everything out. And we stretched it out because any coefficient on X divides the width. And three divided by a third is nine. Two divided by a third is six. And that's why it's that size. is still going to be sitting right here. This trapezoid right here is going to sit right here. The only difference is it's going to be how tall? We're multiplying the height, so it's going to be 6, and we're dividing the width, so it's only going to be a half, a one and a half. So one and a half wide, that would be right here, and one, two, three, four, five, six would be right here. So this trapezoid looks like that. He's only one and a half wide, but he's six tall. Now, what about this triangle right here? He's going to be one wide and 
One tall? One tall. So one wide and one tall. Oh wait, one wide and uh, four tall, I'm sorry. We're, we're doubling the height. So we've got one wide and four tall. So we divide the width, so it's only one wide, but we're multiplying the height, so it's four. What about this guy? Well, he's gonna be, he's gonna be too tall, because I'm doubling it, but he's only gonna be one and a half wide. So he's too tall now, but he's only one and a half wide, because I'm multiplying the height, dividing the width. So, what I want to do in our remaining few minutes is ask you this question of everything that we just did. We just did an entire practice test. That's what you have to know. Uh, you may take the test after school if you wish. Yep, you gotta come right after though. Right, I gotta sell tickets tonight, so you gotta be here right after school. Um, so let's see. This works. Not that you're gonna miss anything on this test, but if you were to miss one thing, what do you think it might be? set up a box problem and then Mamuna's going to help her type that in. So let's say our paper is 19 by 77. We're going to cut the corners out. Right? So here we go. What is the equation for the volume of the box? 19 minus 2x. 19 minus 2x. 77 minus 2x. And x. Right? Now, as crazy as this sounds, guys, this is what's typed in your calculator. When you get to the test, please type in the new equation. Kids forget all the time and just graph the equation that they have in there. You've got to type in your new equation. Then you've got to put in your new domain. What is your new domain? Zero, Zero to nine point five. Nine point five. Half the smaller dimension. Right? And then we're going to type it in. So you, if you got her, Mamuna? So good. Yep. If you got calculator issues, find a friend or come to flat. But that's the setup right there. All right. Who else might miss something? Anybody else have a different problem you might miss? Lynn, what do you miss? Will Browning, what are you going to miss? Uh, Lynn, you're not missing anything. Right. Um. Nothing would make me happier than to have more hundreds than one. <laughs> what do you predict that the, um, the average score is for? You guys are unpredictable. Somebody will get a 32 and somebody will get a 100. I mean, that's what happens. Wow. You got a 32? I didn't say you did. I said someone will. Will, what do you want to do? <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm making them up since you guys can't come up with anything. Um, <laughs> All right, so here's the question. Are they inverses? Are these two inverses? So if we want to know if these are inverses, what's our strategy? We're going to look at an ordered pair and then see if we can get the opposite ordered pair. All right? 
So pick a number. Five. Five. If I let x be five, y is 11. So then I'm going to take that 11 and I'm going to put it in right here. And I'm going to get 11 thirds plus four. Now wait a minute. Is that five? No. No. That would be 11 thirds plus 12 thirds. That would be 23 thirds. So are these inverses? No. Because why? I didn't get my five back again, right? If they're inverses, I'm going to get the five back again. I have no idea. Yeah, and then standing up. And someone else did. Okay. I'm a follower. Yeah. Maybe you better think about that. All right, we're going to do one more. Um, let's say x equals 4 plus t and y equals 3 minus 7 t. These are parametric equations, and we want to write a single equation with no t's in it. It says find a direct algebraic relationship. So what do we do? We're going to subtract We're going to get t by itself in one equation or the other, probably the easiest here. Yep. So t is x minus 4. We'll plug it in right here. So y equals 3 minus 7 times x minus 4. Okay. So y equals 3 minus 7x plus 28. Watch it, watch it, watch it on your distribution. So negative 7x plus 31. And that's your direct algebraic relationship. Can you turn me off there, Solomon? Gotcha. All right, you can go.